Howdy folks, welcome back to another Bjorn's Mighty Thoughts video. Uh, you know, the video where I kind of just sit around and bullshit about something off the cuff. And today we're actually going to talk about Spider-Man and all the toxicity that's coming with it. I've seen a lot of people weigh in, including people who are not really in show business and other things of that nature, in the, or more or less in the entertainment industry, kind of weigh in. There's a lot of fans out there of the MCU movies who are actually pretty toxic about the whole situation between the MCU and Sony. Now to quickly bring you up to snuff, if you're not very aware of what's going on, essentially Sony Pictures has given uh, Marvel Comics, Mar uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe, and Disney more or less, the big middle finger and said, we want Spider-Man back. Now, I want folks to understand, and as I unravel this, the MCU never owned the rights to Spider-Man. It, it's actually been under, uh, the ownership has been under Sony Pictures all these years. So we're going to move on a bit here. We're going to talk about some things I've actually found that I took time to read on the internet. I will post links of the various articles in the video description so you can go read them over them yourself. Now, here's the first one. This was an article on the Deadline website. This is of March. This was posted on the website March 21st, 2018. And, you know, take a moment, pause over what's here. But the primary thing I want to highlight is while... The MCU made a whole lot of money on Spider-Man Homecoming. Uh, so you kind of got to put an asterisk next to Sony here because it's here in black and white. It's Sony's franchise. Sony built this franchise, and I'm going to get more into it here in a bit about how I felt about the franchise. But as you can see, they've kept, all these years since they've had the rights to Spider-Man and the first movie in, in 2002, they've kept Spider-Man relevant in cinema, not Marvel. And of course, I'm you know, going to keep working here, but I'll, I'll make sure the link to this, to this is in the video description. So as I said, you can go read it yourself. You can go look over it. Um, this is primary the meat and the potatoes, the, the primary focus of the article. There's a bit more there because they also talk about Thor Ragnarok and some of the other films. Uh, but what it comes down to is this was an article in, as I said, 2018, early 2018, that pretty well says straight out the movie rights actually belongs to Sony. Uh, so everybody getting their underwears in a bunch about this whole thing, you're kind of, I guess you could say you're a little misguided. But now here's another part. Once again, you're going to want to probably pause this and just read over it yourself. But there's a lot here that disturbs me about the MCU and Disney in general. Which, in all honesty, in my opinion, as things go on with Disney owning the rights to most of the Marvel characters, such as Captain Marvel. Um, I feel that they're kind of really getting off the path here. Like previously, early in the films, such as Iron Man, uh, such as Spider... Uh, sorry, not Spider-Man. I'm focused on Spider-Man. Uh, Captain America, some of the other films, they've... Um, They've kind of tried to stay true, sort of, kind of, to the comic books. Uh, they've done a pretty good job, especially with the earlier films. But I've, as I've noticed, as the film franchise of the MCU continues on, the films have kind of been really dropping off and lacking what made the films really good in the first place. And now they're starting to get to the point, and maybe this is... The toxicity I, you know, pretty well have seen from Brie Larson, uh, Captain Plank. 
but basically now they're getting to the point where they're more worried about being PC anymore than worried about telling a story. I know that's going to get me some dislikes on my YouTube, and honestly, I don't care. But it needs to be said. That's the direction the MCU is going. The fact that Sony took the franchise back for Spider-Man kind of puts some checks and balances in place, especially considering Disney just recently pretty well swallowed up Fox Studios whole. Uh, so now the Alien franchise, which that really scares me, Disney owns the Alien franchise. Uh, Disney ob obviously also owns the uh, X-Men franchise, and there's other franchises that Fox Studios had owned is now in Disney's barn. Now, that being said, there's also a lot of things. This was this was actually an article. Uh, Joan Lee, which is the daughter of Stan Lee, was talking to TMZ. You can see some of that here. Um, and there's just a lot that comes off to me. You know, she speaks about the disrespect that essentially Disney had for Stan Lee and his work, uh, more or less his legacy. Now, this is, the this is to me, if any of this is true, and honestly, I, I do believe it's true. I mean, Disney's a big corporation. They don't necessarily care about the little things. Personally, I'm a comic book fan. Um, to see or more or less find out that Disney actually more or less didn't care about Stanley's work or, or have any respect for it tells me quite a bit. Now, of course, there's some Marvel Studios executives who's kind of tried to keep everything uh, as close to the comics, to what Stanley's work was as they could. However, uh, Kevin is no longer with the company, so... And you can also find that too. I didn't grab that information. But anyway, back to the whole deal here with Sony Pictures. Let's not forget too that recently they had released a Venom film, which told us in the process, you know, this is while Spider Man's web slating for the MCU, they release a Venom film. This pretty much tells us that they own the rights to Spider Man. They actually own over, uh, it was the rights of over 500 characters, I believe it was, uh, that was in the Spider-Man universe over the years. That is quite a few characters. And in fact, Venom wasn't the only film they were working. Well, they've completed Venom. There's supposed to be a Venom 2, from what I understand. But then there's also supposed to be a solo Craven the Hunter film, which if you're not familiar with Craven the Hunter, he was a essentially a big game hunter who went after Spider-Man as the ultimate game. The other one, too, was Morbius, who was a vampire that was introduced through the Spider-Man comics. And he was part of, actually, the Spider-Man the Animated Series back in the 90s. So this whole time, like, people... Some of the people, some of the comments I've seen about the whole ordeal is people are coming off as they're like completely blindsided. Like, Oh my God, when did this happen? You're telling me this whole time Sony owned Spider-Man. Yes. It, the writing was on the wall people. Um, and in all honesty, I feel that some of the, the remarks, the, the toxicity it, it's unwarranted. Um, there's a lot of people that are kind of ready to piss on Sony about this, but let's not forget back in 2002, Sony pictures and Columbia released Spider-Man. Let's not forget the director was Sam Remy. Let's not forget the guy who played Spider-Man and Peter Parker was Tobey Maguire. Let's not forget that Mary Jane Watson was played by Kristen Dunst. Let's not forget that Norman Osborn, Green Goblin 
was played by William Defoe. And I could continue on. It came down to that it had a budget of $139 million. Its total take was uh, $821.7 million from the box office. That's not any other sales. What I make my point here is if it wasn't for Sony, we wouldn't actually have Iron Man. We wouldn't have uh, Captain America. We wouldn't have Guardians of the Galaxy. Spider-Man and Sony actually paved the way. Now, don't get me wrong. Fantastic Four, the original Fantastic Four, uh, that was actually worth a shit. The, the actual original, the, the directed TV movie, that was never even released. Um, which actually, Chris Evans starred in Fantastic Four. But moving on, that they kind of put their feet in the water, tested the water, while there's a lot of people who say Fantastic Four was a bad film, it actually took home profit, which led to X-Men being done, which led to Spider-Man being done, Spider-Man actually making the most of the money. And then it finally clicked that, hey, we can make big budget superhero films and people will watch them. Then Iron Man comes up the pipe. So, you know... Get mad if you will, but show some, show a little bit of respect. I mean, I know Amazing Spider-Man just sucked nuts. So did, well, so did Amazing Spider-Man 2. And let's not forget Spider-Man 3, Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 3, sucked nuts as well. The only films that were really worth anything out of the Sony franchise was Spider-Man 1 and Spider-Man 2. Uh, the rest of it was just absolute rubbish. But that being said, we should not forget that. And I would say, yeah, we were fortunate to have Spider-Man in the MCU while he was there. Uh, now that he's going back to Sony and Sony is going to continue on with a franchise or at least start their own, restart their own franchise. I'm a little confused to what direction they're going here or going to be going. All I have to say is I don't care if they make a good film, a good Spider-Man film. I'll park my butt in front of the TV and watch it. It's gotten, you know, I don't care. I'm not going to hold a grudge. But anyway, folks, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you for the next video.